a quick reaction to Las Palmas versus Real Madrid. Let's put a full stop, a period on the game that we've just seen. What's your takeaway from Real Madrid's performance today, Luis? Once again, that Real Madrid needs to consider a goal to react and to show what really Real Madrid can, can bring on the table. And today, once again, when they concede, suddenly you see a totally different uh, reaction from them and start pressing, start using the wide areas, and the, the players start bringing that intensity, of course, the talent we all know that they had. But uh, it, it, sometimes you, you think that it will arrive the point where it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough time or it's not going to be enough reaction to get the, the results. So today, once again, Real Madrid, we've seen this uh, movie so many times. They can relax, they go on the, on the uh, like, like cruising during the game. And suddenly the reaction of, we need these three points to continue at the top of the table. They bring out uh, another e uh, gear. Uh, Tony Cross start bringing balls to one side to the side, <laughs> like a uh, proper Kaiser. And well, at the end, uh, the, the talent of uh, Vinny Junior that controls a beautiful ball from Kamabinga and then uh, volley it inside the, uh, uh, the net, yes, so to, to get the equalizer, it was the proven that Real Madrid was again into the game and they were going to get the three points. And, and it's a pity because definitely I think that Las Palmas deserve a little bit more. They show once again this one of those special teams of, uh, of La Liga. The style of play is beautiful. The players play with so much confidence. But in the end, it's about the goals. And I think that when they got that first goal, start sitting uh, too deep into the near the, their box and then you know that Real Madrid is coming to you. So big three points for Real Madrid today. Yeah, they so there are lots of points I do agree with Luis Garcia. Let's discuss first half performance. I think we want to forget first half performance. I don't know what I was watching. However, that's also part of football, right? Second half is where real football happened. If you look at the goal Real Madrid considered today. Okay, Rudiger tried to close down the player in the right side. So, which makes sense. But what was Nacho doing? Why Nacho has left so much space for their player. With a player with that much of experience, I just can't fathom like how he does this. Anyway, we move. And if you look at Real Madrid's first goal, I would say that's a beautiful goal. What an incredible pass by Kamavinga to Vinicius Jr. And Vinicius Jr., what a touch. That first touch was so sleeky, so smooth. That control and that finish from that angle at first glimpse, you might think, oh, that's normal goal. That looks very easy. However, if you look at it from the other camera, the angle was very tight. And Vinny finished with his weak foot, left foot. That's amazing. So when it's already 1-1, you know that Real Madrid is going to come back. Because this is the comeback FC, you can say it. And good cross by Tony Cruz. And what a header by the birthday boy, Chuamini. Chuameninga. Chuamini. There's a few patterns starting to emerge when it comes to Real Madrid. Some of them are age-old, obviously. Mm -hmm. Comeback wins, we know you can count on Real Madrid for those. Second half comeback wins this season, five. La Liga ranked first in that department. Corner kick goals, eight of those first in that department. And game winners after the 80th minute, five of those as well. Second in La Liga rankings there. They're leaving it late, but they're getting the job done, Ale. Uh, yes, and Luis just addressed the players and the change of attitude in the players once Las Palmas scored the goal. I'll take it to Ancelotti and the coaching changes. And sometimes we ask, well, how much influence does a coach really have? It, it's the players out there that should make it happen for Real Madrid. And they did. But Ancelotti changed the look of the team. And he knew right away, once they gave up the goal, we need something different in the attack. We're not utilizing the right-hand side, so what am I going to do? I'm going to bring Jose Lu down the middle. That attracts the attention of the center backs, which then frees up Vinny Jr. and frees up Rodrigo. Vinny Jr. then talking to the inside, which frees up the overlapping runs of Fran Garcia, which we saw time and time again in the second half. When you see your team in trouble, the coach is there to help you out to give you a different idea, to give you a different sense of what the team can be and a different look. And that's what Ancelotti did today. And just, if you thought that Ancelotti didn't get it right with his substitutions initially, well, guess what? Too many comes in for Camavinga, who was having a fairly decent game, had a beautiful assist to Vinny Jr. And too many, essentially, with his first meaningful touch, is scoring a goal. So sometimes we criticize coaches, but other times, when you see what Carlo Ancelotti did today and how he impacted the game, you have to say, this guy knows what he's doing. So this is important. Elliot just made a great point about the coaching tactics. Okay, we know Carlo is kind of like old school coach. He doesn't make drastic decision or drastic change. 
However, this season he's making a lot of quick changes, which is coming as good for us. For example, if you look at Almeria's game and today's game, when he saw something is missing, something needs to be changed, he made immediate change. And that's game changer. For last game, even today, those substitutions made huge difference. For example, at first up, some players today was invisible. Brahim Diaz, I don't know if he touched any single ball today. Ceballos and Rodrigo, those three players were missing totally at first half. The only player in our attacking side was trying to do something different is Vinicius Jr. No one else is there. So Carlo had to make those changes. And because of those changes and alongside our intensity, we came back. We won the game today. So if we would like to discuss some tactical moments from the match, also player's performance, let's discuss the best player for me today. Was none other than Kama Vinga. The only player was so much fun to watch even at first half and second half was Kamavinga. He was so much fun to watch. I don't know how to explain. Insane recovery, winning the ball and then doing some playmaking. Like look at the path, look at the assist for Vinicius' goal. Like what do you expect from youngster? O almost 10 out of 10 performance for me from Kamavinga. The second best player for me was Vinicius Jr. Yes, he deserves also man of the match because the goal is the important. The goal he scored was so vital for us. Aside from that, as I said already, the only player was trying to do something different is Vinicius today. Yes, he could score a few more goals, but that's not the point. My point is that if a player keeps performing and trying his best, that's the key to me. So why I like Vinicius so much is that compared to other attackers is that even when he's having say off day, he'll do something different. He'll make he will make you feel his presence on the field. That's what I like to see. Another player's performance that I kind of like today is Fran Garcia. Yes, defensively, he's still liable. For example, today he had, I think, 2-1 versus 1 moment. Both of them, both duel, he lost. So defensively, he's not perfect. But when you talk about attacking, he's very great. For example, if you look at our performance in second half, the overlapping run he was making in the left side, those were great. What I have noticed is that that overlapping runs works and really important whenever we have a player in the center, like Hosolo. So he can do some crossing or passing. I still believe that he's not going to be a starter in big game, but when you play smaller team, a little like not strong op opponent, I think he can do some damage. Another player that had insane performance today was Tony Cruz. At this age, He's still one of the best midfielder in the world and he's performing top level. So let's discuss tactics that did not work out today. For example, at first up, we are playing that diamond formation. For me, that diamond formation was made to get best out of Jude Bellingham. So whenever he's not available because of the suspension, it doesn't make sense to have the same formation because that formation works so well with Bellingham. But when he's not there, it doesn't make any sense. That's why we notice a lot of players went missing. For example, Brahim, so poor today. And Sebaos, good squad player, but not starting material at Real Madrid. One thing I don't understand why Modric is not playing. For me, Modric, even at this age, can't be worse than Sebaos. I don't know why Modric didn't play single minute in the last two matches. I think that's a puzzling to me. I don't know if he's injured or Carlo is doing some tactical changes or I don't know honestly. Being said that, I think Carlo found out the answer from today's performance that Sabayos is not the answer. The last point I would say the rotation Carlo did today was good. Generally, Carlo doesn't do much rotation whenever you are playing a crucial match. When Carlo did this rotation, I was a little bit pleasantly surprised. I think a lot of players needed rest. Fede Valverde is one of them. This player is playing almost every match. So this rest is good for this player. Anyway, let me know what did you think about our performance today in the comment section below.